Hey guys, thanks so much for joining us today. We're so excited. We have a very special word coming. So grab your Bibles, grab your snacks, grab your notes, and let's get started. Have uh, any of you seen Pastor Chris? Can you check? Can y'all check? <clears throat> Pastor Chris. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm on the call. Hey, where, what are you doing? You put, putting out God, son, it is Sunday. We need you here. Listen, I can't tell the people to do something that I ain't out here doing. I gotta get this mail. I, I got that, but can you do it here today? Listen. I need to know, is anybody in the room ready for that God mail? Y'all ready to deliver some God mail? Pastor Seth. Yeah, yeah. I ain't coming in until I know that everybody wants that God mail. Wait, wait, wait. You ain't coming in until you know they ready for the God mail? There's so many people out here lost. I ain't coming in until I feel like everybody in that room is expecting God to speak to them. Are y'all expecting? Come on, make some noise. That ain't enough, Pastor Seth. They got to get on their feet. Say, they got to they gotta get on their feet. Uh-oh. Hey, Do look. You know can Jesus? You... They... Oh, yeah, they ready. But we need oh, you here. Are you ready for Because I ain't coming in until I feel like there's an expectation in the atmosphere. Uh-oh, come like on. Do you believe God's going to speak God to you today? Do you believe God has a word for you today? Do you believe that God has some God mail for you, for your family? Come on, if you believe it, make some noise if you believe it. Expect God to do something. Hey. Here we go. Here we go. Did you get your mail? I'm about to preach it like I feel it. On the count of three, I want you to look at your neighbor, whether you know him or not, say, did you get your mail? One, two, three. Oh, that was weak. That was weak. That was, that was okay. I need you to say it like, like you missed the mailman. This is how you say it. Did you get your mail? One, two, three. And, 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 and I need you to wait for an answer. Say yes or no. Did you get your mail? Slap your neighbor, high five him and tell him, today, you about to get that God mail. Come on, have a seat. Anybody ready to receive their God mail today. Listen, I'm going to have to break this message. Listen, do y'all know how hard it is to make a mailman outfit swaggy? I had to put the Jordans on. Off-whites. Are y'all ready for this God mail? Come on, come on. Do me a favor, stand up on your feet one more time because I actually believe that God wants to do something. Pastor Seth, I'm going to throw this at you. Let's go. Hands up all over the room. Say, God, I'm ready for you to speak to me. Today is a significant day. I believe what you're about to do is for me. It's not just for me. It's for everybody around me, too. In Jesus' name, come on, one more time. Clap those hands unto God. Somebody shout, week six, week six. matchmakers. Week six. week six, matchmakers. 
Have a seat. Have a seat. Hey, last week we continued our series, Matchmakers. For those, if this is your first time here, we're not crazy. We're just passionate about God. Anybody passionate about God? Come on. We looked at three things last week. We've been talking about how to stay lit for Christ. And when, number, the one, number one thing that we looked at was this, was lit people are filled people. Anybody filled with the Holy Spirit this morning? Come on. And then we looked at the reality that we cannot run on fumes, but we must run what? Full. Somebody, tell somebody to say, I'm running full of the Holy Spirit. Number three, we looked at the reality that we must make the drop. I said this last week, you were delivered to what? Deliver. deliver. Somebody say, I was delivered to deliver. Oh, say it like you believe it. I was delivered to deliver. I felt like the Holy Spirit said, Chris, I want you to stay right there for another week because I want you to expand and expound on what it really means to, to make the drop. Because how many of y'all know there is somebody in this city that needs Jesus? Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. Hey, lean in today because I feel like God has a word for every single person. And this is my belief. My belief is that when we leave this place, God is going to ignite our city. Not just one person, two person, three people. I, I, believe, I believe this entire city can be saved by Jesus Christ. Watch, because of this entire room right here. Anybody else believe that in this room? Come on. By a show of hands, how many of you uh, were saved because somebody... Either, either, either invited you to a gathering like Mark Church or shared their testimony to you and, you, and you and you felt like you saw Jesus through that. Just by a show of hands, you were actually saved through somebody inviting you. Here's my question. Could you imagine if the people that invited you to, to church to introduce you to Jesus, now that you have Jesus, could you imagine if they didn't invite you? Let me put it this way. Could you imagine if they didn't make the drop? Could you imagine if they didn't deliver the God mail? Ask your neighbor, say, could you imagine that? This is what I believe. Every single person, anybody saved in the room, say, hey. hey. If you're saved, that means you have experienced, you have received salvation. But watch this. Salvation is an invitation for you to join God's mail center. Y'all see my mail center today? Let me say it again. Salvation is an invitation for you to join God's mail center. In other words, when you got saved, you became a part of God's messaging system. Right? And, and not only were you saved for you to be saved, but watch this. Your entire family is depending on you dropping the mail. Let me say it this way. Your whole legacy, everybody that comes after you is depending on you to continue to drop the God mail. See, you don't believe me. Go to Matthew chapter 9, verse 37. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are what? Few. In other words, there's enough God mail, but there's not enough people to deliver the God mail. Oh, I'm preaching. Some of y'all still don't believe that you are, you have been set up to make sure that your entire family uh, at least has the opportunity to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. I'm going to prove it to you right here. Go to chap Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. It says, and Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And watch this. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise, somebody shout the promise. The promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far off. Who is all? Everybody. Look at your name. So that's everybody. Your number one point is this. As a matchmaker, as a, as a matchmaker it's a family affair. Write it down. This is a family affair. God didn't just save you for you to be saved. God saved you so that you could save everybody else. Has anybody, in, in, let, me, let me just by show of hands, be proud. Has anybody come to the knowledge of Christ through your, through your life, uh, uh, through, through you receiving Jesus Christ? Just by show of hands. Somebody else. Come on. Come on. Look, look all over the room. Somebody came to the knowledge of Christ just because you accepted Jesus Christ, right? And so salvation and you receiving the Holy Spirit is not just for you, but God actually needs you to deliver the God mail so that somebody else in your life can actually receive it. Let me put it this way. Your cousin Pookie and Ray Ray them, 
Jimmy and John John, the one that always asks for money at the family reunion, God wants them saved too. Let me go this way. That coworker that gets on your everlasting nerves, God wants them saved too. Uh-huh. Your, your, your husband that ain't quite saved yet, God wants him saved too. I'm coming into your kitchen. That, that addicted family member in your, in your household, God wants them saved too. You know why? Because God has no respect to a person. God just needs you to deliver the mail. And watch this. The Holy Spirit will do the rest of the work. I need, I need the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to come on up here. Get into position. I need y'all to be a part of my mail. Y'all give it up for the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I get it. Some of y'all are asking me, how can you be so confident, Pastor Chris? How can you be so confident that God actually designed me to make sure that somebody else in my family would come to the knowledge of Christ? Can I tell you? But the, the Bible says this. His word will not return to him void. Which means this. If God said that your husband would be saved, then baby, you need to believe that your husband will be saved. If God said that your co-worker would be saved, you need to believe that your co-worker, your cousin, your aunt, your sister, I can't get no help in here, will be saved because his word will not return to him what void watch this if God wants to bring breakthrough to your family he'll break through you to bring breakthrough to them somebody shout God break through me to break through them come on I'm trying to encourage somebody else who's been trying to wonder if God has a plan even for your lost friends anybody got any lost friends in the room yeah, God has a plan and a purpose for them. This is what the Bible says in verse 39. It says, and for all who are far off. That means anybody else around your circle, anybody in your world that is not yet saved, God has a plan to save them. But this is what I love. The CEV version reads this. This promise is for you, your children, and it is for everyone our Lord God will choose. Watch this. No matter where they live somebody say that no matter where they live God is saying this I don't care about your family's current situation and where they are and what they're going through and even what they're doing I'm the God who generates the male and so I'm the God who can change their situation I'm the same God who can break through any situation because I'm the God who's the listen I started the male center I'm the alpha and the omega I'm the beginning and I'm the end so why would you get twisted of what's happening in the middle of a person's life if it's not the end of their life then I'm still working. If it's not the end, if they're not in their grave, I'm still working. If they're not in their grave, I'm still breaking through. I'm still healing. I'm still delivering. I'm still saving and I'm still setting free. God doesn't care where people currently are. Listen, God don't care what their spiritual address is right now because God's the one that could change their spiritual address. I want to prophesy in this room that there are some people who God's going to use to change someone's address from hell to heaven. But you got to be willing. You got to be willing. It ain't enough for God to change your address. God wants to change your aunt's address too. God's saying, I don't care if they're still in the streets, I can change their address. I don't care if they're a prostitute, I can change their address. I don't care if they're still watching pornography every single night, I can change their address from hell to heaven. I'm the God who's the beginning. I'm the God who's the end. In fact, I'm the author and the finisher of your faith and their faith. If I can change your address from hell to heaven, then I can change their address from hell to heaven. I don't know who I'm talking to, but God's saying, I need somebody that will join God's mail center. Somebody shout, come on, somebody shout in this room because see, God's looking for one person, open this up. God's looking for one person, just one more person who will join God's mail center so that we can change the spiritual addresses in this city. It ain't enough for you to go to heaven for everybody else in your family to go to hell because my Bible tells me for God so love not Christians oh you better help me preach it not God so love the perfect 
It didn't say that God so loved those who were halfway there. It didn't say that God so loved people who were, who were, who were being perfected. It says, for God so loved the world. Who is the world? The lost. That means the person that's on crack. That means the person who's strung out. That means the person who don't know no better. Why would you sit there and tell, why would you tell a crackhead to stop doing crack when that's all they know to do? Why would you look at the lost and tell the lost to stop being lost as if they know what to do? When you're the one that has the found solution on the inside of you and God saying, I need you to deliver the mail that they can go from being lost to being found. They can go from being empty to being full. They can go from from being in, in a position of going to hell to going to heaven. In fact, I prophesy in this room that there are people in this room who are about to change their spiritual address from, he from hell to heaven. In this room. Shh. But you ever wonder, let's just say, let's just say heaven has a male center. Right? Let's just say this is a male center. You ever wonder what would happen if the male center shut down? You ever wonder what would happen if God stopped speaking? You ever wonder what would happen if Jesus stopped praying for you? What if God's male center stopped down, shut down? Because see, that's how we live. We get saved, and then after we saved, we say, God, I don't no longer want to work for you. I just want to get to heaven. I'll see you later. Shh. And so God the Father is the generator. He generates the male. The Bible says that be, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. I predestined you. I called you. And so God knows every single person that he is in pursuit to, 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 to meet him in heaven. Right? So the Father generates the male. Where's Jesus? At? How you doing, Jesus? You good, Jesus? You good? Awesome. Jesus, the Bible says, because no one comes to the Father except through the Son. And so he's the one that sorts the mail. Uh-huh. Get back to work, Jesus. Keep praying, Jesus. And the Holy Spirit, hey, Holy Spirit, delivers the mail. Because Jesus says, I'm going to send another helper. And he's going to only say what I want him to say. He will not speak in his own authority. In other words, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to drop off God mail, and that God mail is straight from God's mind. Keep working, Holy Spirit. I'm about to put you to work in just a second. Uh-huh. Come here. Where's Danielle at? Get two chairs, sit right here. Come here, Holy Spirit. Right here, right here, right there, to the side. Boom, perfect, right beside each other, right beside each other. Perfect, come here, Holy Spirit. Uh-huh. Y'all here? Say, I'm here. Now, the Father generates the male. He looks at a person's life and he says, you know what? It's time, Holy Spirit, for you to pursue Danielle. Go drop off that mail and tell her I love her. Tell her she has a plan and a purpose. And it's amazing because a lot of you are caught up in relationships just like Danielle. And God's been trying to speak to you and get your attention. But you got that loser who only got a job. But trying to keep your attention, but he didn't put the breath in your body. Trying to be the sustainer of your soul, deliver another piece of mail, tell her that I have a plan and a purpose for her life. But she's so distracted because love is blind. But tell somebody to say, the Father never, he never gives up. Come here, Joah. Holy Spirit, deliver that mail to Joah. And the Holy Spirit will speak to Joah and say, Joah. I want you to use your gift of prophecy and tell her that what she did last night in the room, green walls, God is still able to forgive anything she's done. Go tell her, Holy Spirit. Go tell her. Go let her know. 
And see, something happens when God mail hits you and you know there's no way that you could have known that situation unless the Father generated it. And so she breaks up. And now she's a part of the, of the mail center. Still got a plan and a purpose for you. Bum. Because for God so loved the person that was distracting his daughter. Stay with me. You ever heard the term, what would Jesus do? Huh? Remember that movement? What would Jesus do? Some of y'all did not do what Jesus did. Some of y'all punched people in the face and you shouldn't have punched people in the face. When he said turn the other cheek, he was not talking about you punching that person in the other cheek. But do you ever wonder who you're actually talking to when you say what would Jesus do? What you're really asking is what would the Holy Spirit say? Jesus sent the Holy Spirit and now the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you. And so the interpretation of what would Jesus do is really what would Holy Spirit say. So what we ought to do when we're delivering God mail is, Holy Spirit, what are you saying? Because Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you. That's what Jesus is doing. But Holy Spirit is in divine pursuit of soul after soul after soul after soul. Are y'all here in this room with me? Stay with me. Number two, I told you last week to stay lit, right? Lit people are led people. I need you to get to work. You're part of the mail center now. You got to work. That's what's wrong with Christians now. We don't want to work. We want to get saved. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'm in your kitchen right now. Here's what I've learned. Here's what I've learned. Watch this. Prime example. It's not that you don't want to deliver God's mail. Here's what I've learned. You don't know how to deliver God's mail. What, what you put in you is what leads you. Hand me that water bottle right there, that black water bottle on that seat. Tell somebody, say, what you put in you, come on, say, whatever you put in you is what leads you. Thank you, Tristan. One of our worship leaders bought me this water bottle. It's a hydrate water bottle. Y'all need to get a hydrate water bottle. Oh, my God. Best thing ever. This hydrate water bottle is connected to my phone. It will literally tell me when it's time to drink water. It'll glow, it'll light up. You want to know why? Because I suck at drinking water. Anybody else suck at drinking water? I can't stand water. I would rather drink coffee until I'm dehydrated beyond measure. Can't stand it. In fact, I got to drink some water now. Y'all say, hey, Miss Hydration. That's what I called her, Miss Hydration. I've never really been a water drinker, Holy Spirit. And so I end up with headaches, and I end up dehydrated. And it's the same way when you don't put the Holy Spirit in you, you end up with headaches in life and end up empty. I know, I know. But the thing I love about this is I started getting notifications to drink water at times I didn't want to drink. It would, it would say stuff like, we ain't going to get fool ourselves it ain't gonna drink itself it started saying smart stuff to me I wanted to throw this water bottle and the Holy Spirit told me he says Chris if you don't start drinking by the end of the day this is gonna be PG stay with me you gonna know that you're dehydrated when you pee because your body will tell you, you didn't get enough of me. If you're going to lead someone to Christ, then Christ has to be the one that leads you. It's not enough to receive God without putting God consistently in you. Have you been living life, getting saved, but not allowing the Holy Spirit to fill you daily? Are you spiritually dehydrated? Ask your neighbor, are you spiritually dehydrated? I said it again, I'm saying it again. You can't lead somebody else to Christ unless you're being led by who? Christ. See, 
you've got to put something in you for the Holy Spirit to work with. The Holy Spirit only works with one thing, the Word of God. I've got to give the Holy Spirit something to work with if I want the Holy Spirit to use me for God's glory. And so it's not that God's not speaking to you, it's that you haven't taken, when's the last time that you actually took some time to put the Word of God in you? When's the last time that you said, you know what, I'm going, I'm going fast pop smoke, I'm going to put some Maverick City on. I'm going I'm to take some opportunity, and I'm just going to get away, and I'm going to pray to God. Listen, I'm telling you something that is not fun, but I'm telling you something that is more beneficial for your spiritual walk with God so that you can do the will of God and deliver the mail of God. God's saying, it is, when you started with me, you were on high. When you started with me, you were full. But now that I've been, God's, oh, the Holy Spirit is always whispering, get in the word of God. How many of you ever heard that? Read your Bible. Oh, come on. Don't, don't. Listen, some of y'all got the Bible app. Y'all be, be, be ignoring it. Just ignoring it. You start three days, you're on a good streak. It's like you're doing great. Three turn into 30. 30 turn into a bad relationship. Bad relationship turn into suicidal thoughts. Suicidal thoughts turn into I'm not going to church anymore because that pastor told me that I was doing good. And he lied. Did he lie or did you not develop a regimen to stay spiritually hydrated so that when God speaks, you can deliver God mail? Stay with me. Y'all good? And so God may say something like, Joa, I want you to go tell the bomb, I mean, Xavier, that I love him. And that I have a plan and a purpose for his life. And right now, see, some of you are like, Pastor Chris, that's really bold. But I wouldn't even know what to say if I actually went out to go deliver God's mail. Can I give you a, can I give you a secret? I'm about to give you a secret. Say, give me the secret, Pastor Chris. John 14, 26, it says this. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. And bring to your remembrance all things that I said. Watch this. The Holy Spirit don't need you to rememberize the Bible. He just needs you to read the Bible. He'll bring it back to your remembrance. God doesn't need you to be confident in what you can do. He needs you to be confident in the word that you read. And what you put on the inside of you trying to help somebody deliver God mail today. Here's the beautiful thing I've learned about this. I've had less headaches in the last five days drinking this water, even though I didn't want to, than the last 10 years. So much so, I'm going to drink it right now. Because, see, the Holy Spirit, when he tells you to do something, he ain't telling you to do it when it's convenient for you. God, really, like right now, while I'm pumping gas? Uh, yeah, don't you ask for me? Don't you ask for help at any time of the day when you need me? Now that I need you to drop off this God mail? It's an inconvenience for you, but the cross wasn't an inconvenience for you to receive me. But because you late for a meeting, God mail can wait. Tell your neighbor, say it can never wait, because a soul is in the balance. Here's the reward of daily putting in the Word of God. Ephesians five twenty six. That he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word. Did you know that every time you put the word of God in, that the word of God starts to wash away things in your life that don't belong in your life? Your number three point is deliver your story. I'm about to go there. She, she gave me that face. She gave me them eyebrows like, mm, he's on to something. I am. I'm about to come into your kitchen. Here we go. Not only... Does the Holy Spirit have something to work with when you put the word of God in you? You become stronger than your hidden sins. 
Do you see how we only got, woo? I was addicted to pornography for 15 years. And people ask me all the time, how in the world can you go 15 years strung out on an addiction like pornography and then the last several years of your life not even be tempted? It's not that I wasn't tempted. It's that I put the Holy Spirit and the Word of God in me so that when the tempter came, I had the power to say no. Because I put God in me when I didn't want God. I read the Word of God when I didn't want to read the Word. I prayed to God when I didn't want to pray. I worshiped when I didn't want to worship. Listen, I would much rather listen to Usher than Maverick City. When you feel it in your funny. Then somebody mm, makes you change the way like hanging with your crew. But you end like you feel that you don't really know. Do, 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 let it go. So I've been there, turn it, run around. At the only, this is what I found. Sing it. Nobody. Oh, if you're touched by the words of the song, then you know you got it, you got it back. Hang up and you call right. How great is our God. Sing. You see how half the room didn't sing. Because there was moments, let me just tell you. I still have urges to watch porn. But I have three seconds to choose which spirit I'm going to listen to. Somebody in this room needs to hear it. I have three seconds. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, there's somebody in the room, there's a lot of people in the room who struggles with porn. But you need to know, if God can do it for your pastor, God can do it for you. And so this is what I do every night. I take my phone and I put it underneath in between me and my wife's pillow. Anytime I feel like there's an urge to watch porn, I put the phone in between me and my wife because it's awkward. I turn over and I start quoting scriptures. It's like I'm talking to myself. And I don't care if Ashley thinks I'm crazy. I'm trying to deliver myself out of a moment. I turn over and I say, greater is he that is in me than he that is within the world. Thank you, Father, that I am the head and not the tail. Thank you, God, that you said for every temptation there is a escape. Thank you, God, that I put in your word. Thank you that I prayed. Thank you that I was listening to Maverick City even when I didn't want to because this very moment is letting me know that I am not spiritually dehydrated just because I have a temptation. But it is the evidence that the Spirit of God has made me strong than the spirit of pornography and I want to tell somebody that when you get the word of the Lord in you God will make you stronger than that addiction I don't care what it is God's saying I will make you stronger than anything that you are dealing with in your hidden sins God does not care about your hidden sin as much as he cares about your spiritual strength tell your neighbors to get your weight up I got to land this plane. You still working on them? You ready to give your life to Jesus? I hope you are. Tell your neighbor, say, deliver the drop by delivering your story. See, eventually your testimony becomes a part of the drop. Eventually, your testimony becomes a part of the God mail that God needs to deliver. Did you know that the first piece of mail that God ever delivered was for your soul? God will send a piece of mail from the Holy Spirit and say, tell her how much I love him. Tell him how much I love him, love her. And then after you receive salvation, you become a part of God's mail center, but then God, just, God sends you back out with more God mail. And now it's not about your salvation as much as it is about the next person's salvation and God using your story. See, there's a lot of pastors that are embarrassed that they were addicted to pornography. But I will never, ever be embarrassed about my past because the Bible says this. And they all overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. 
Did you know that part of the mail that you're supposed to release is the thing that you used to be ashamed about? Oh, because you brand new in Christ means that you can't talk about what Christ did for you? Because you was in them streets? And now you at these altars? You think God can't use your story? No, your story is a part of the God mail that God generated. And watch this. It happens naturally. Have you ever been doing something and you meet somebody that had the same story that you had? They're going through what you just went through? Oh, you think that's by chance? No. It was God using you to drop off God mail using your story to win one more person to Jesus Christ. Here's what I learned. I know you used to be a part of the kingdom of darkness, distracting God's, da God's daughter, but God wants you saved too. But you had daddy issues, and so you would distract other women because you wanted to belong, and you were very insecure and you wanted to fit in. But God's saying, I love you, and you're mine, and even though you haven't given me a yes, I'm still going to use the Holy Spirit to pursue you. See, heaven has a male center, but watch this, so does hell have a male center. I'm going to play the devil for just a bit. For every piece of mail that God delivers, Satan delivers a piece of mail too. So she may say that you're loved by God, and he may say you'll never be enough. You'll never amount to anything. You're going to be just like your crackhead daddy. You're going to be addicted to pornography until the day you die. What's that? Why are you delivering that God mail? What you mean he don't need me? Stop, stop sending that God mail. You ain't nothing. You a narcissistic liar. You a narcissistic liar. And see what ends up happening is God starts to deliver more God mail than hell mail. He starts sending joy his way. He starts sending hope his way. Starts sending peace his way. That he will be a conqueror. That greater is in, he, is in him than he that is in the world. See, something happens. And watch this. God mail doesn't just get delivered. God needs people to deliver the mail. If not then hell's mail center will become greater than God's mail center. Every time you don't deliver God's mail, there's somebody who's getting filled with hell mail. I just want to know, is there anybody in this room that wants to join God's mail center? I want to join and sign me up. Sign me up, Taylor. Sign me up. Hope, joy, peace, salvation, forgiveness, identity. Somebody this week needs some God mail about identity. Somebody this week needs some God mail to know that they've been forgiven. Somebody this week needs joy. I did some math the other day. It's like 120 people that we average right now in this room. 120 people grabbed three pieces of God mail and handed it out last this, this week we'd have over 300 people who would have an opportunity to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and give their life to Jesus. If we did it every single week, by the end of the year, we'd have over 2,500 people that would receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. At the beginning of the year, I said, we were gonna pursue the 1%. 1% of Fayetteville is 2,000 people. 
if everybody in this room took three pieces of God mail and delivered it every single day, by the end of the year, we would reach our goal of 2,000 people coming to Jesus Christ. I want to know, is there anybody in the room that wants to be a part of God's mail center? Because we can't ask Jesus to do anything anymore. Because the Bible says that now he is sitting at the right hand of the Father interceding. Stop asking Jesus to do something that now you and the Holy Spirit are responsible to do. I feel it in the room. Here's the beautiful part. is now that he's saved, when the enemy does come, give me a piece of mail. Give me some hate. Give me some hate mail. Here we go. And when the enemy does come and try to offer that he's not good enough, the issue is his address changed. <laughs> and so the only thing I could do with this is return. You better stand on your feet. If you believe that you've been used by God to send back mail from hell back to his sender. Some of you in this room have been dealing with mail that doesn't belong to you. And it's time to send it back to the sender. I don't know who told you you were not good enough, but you're more than good enough. I don't know who told you that you're not worthy, but you were redeemed by Christ. I don't, told, I don't know who told you that you'd never be uh, delivered and experience the freedom of God. But the Bible says, he whom the Son sets free is truly free indeed. I want to talk to a few people in this room. First off, I want to talk to somebody who does not know Jesus Christ. I want to talk to somebody who's walked away from Jesus Christ. This is the day that God's saying, I want you to come back home. I want you to receive Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior. This is what the Bible says. Those that believe in their heart and confess with their mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will be saved. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you are set up by God because God's saying, I can't promise you tomorrow, but you do have today. And today is the day that God wants you to join the family of God. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I want to talk to the person that doesn't know Jesus or the person that walked away from Jesus. If you're saying, that's me, Pastor Chris, I need to get my life right. You need to know one thing. God's not waiting on you to be perfect. God's waiting for you to receive a perfect God. You say, I need him. I need him in my life. Or I need to rededicate my life to Jesus. I want you to do something bold in just a minute. I'm going to offer you an opportunity to receive your relationship with Jesus Christ. And all I need you to do is lift that hand high, as high as you can. One, two, three. Who am I talking to? Come on, all over the room. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to give my life to Jesus. I see that hand. Thank you, ma'am. Come on, lift it high, lift it high. Lift it high so I can see it. I want to give my life to Jesus. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Here's what I need. If you raise that hand and you say, I need to give my life to Jesus or I want to rededicate my life to Jesus, I want you to just touch that person on, that, on your left or to your right. Say, hey, will you walk down the altar with me? And I want everybody in this room to go crazy right now. Come on. If you raise that hand and you say, I want to give my life to Jesus. Come on. Come on. Come on, she's not the only one, I know it. Don't let the enemy hold you back. Don't let the enemy hold you back. This is the day God's saying I wanna... Stone, you better grab him, Stone. Grab him, Stone. Welcome him home. Come on, there's more. God's saying, come home, come home, 
Don't let the enemy hold you back. Don't let the enemy hold you back. Come on. I feel it. God's saying, this is the day that I made for you. This is the day I made for you. This is the Y'all better help her. Y'all better help. I feel like there's two more people in the room. Come on. God don't care about what you did last night. God don't care about what you did last week. God's not asking for you to be perfect. God's saying, I want to welcome you to the greatest family there is. And God's waiting patiently for you. You've been watching everybody else around you come up. And God's saying, now is the time that I want you to come up. I want you to join the greatest family. I want you to be redeemed. I want you to be restored. I want you to come to the knowledge of Christ. I want you to experience true freedom. Come on, I need everybody praying. Come on, God wants you to come home. God wants you to come home. God wants you to be saved. You're saying, Pastor Chris, why would you make it like this? Because God's saying this, I want you to be celebrated in this moment. I want you to be celebrated in this moment. I want you to know that God has a plan and a purpose for your life. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. We're going to empty hell and we're going to fill up heaven. We're going to empty hell and we're going to fill up heaven. We're going to empty hell and we're going to fill up heaven. Come, 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 come on, raise the noise in this room. Raise the noise in this room. Raise the noise in this room. Come on. I don't know who I'm talking to. Come on. God's saying, come home. Come home. I'm going to give you just a few more minutes. I know it. I feel the nerves. I feel the nerves. I feel you going back and forth. I feel you going back and forth.